Really, let's start, let's start by talking about the shale activity of the state, which is in some ways the, the big energy story of this year, not only in Texas, but around the country, people want to know about all the shale activity in Texas. Can you quantify for us in dollar terms or in any other terms the magnitude of this? I think some people don't fully appreciate the extent to which the shale activity is driving so many conversations. Well, first of all, let me introduce my wife of 26 years, Mary Jane, who's joined us Hello, here Hello, how are you? I will have no mean questions for you, ma'am. I'll save them all for the chairman. And uh, one of my children will be walking in late. He had okay. to drop his sister off at school. Excellent. What is happening in the oil and gas patch these days is revolutionary. This technology, the combination of horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing, has opened up these shale opportunities that geologists always thought were there, yep. but really didn't know how to recover them until George Mitchell, a great Aggie, put the two of these technologies together in the Barnett Shale and really began to refine this ability to drill horizontally and fracture long laterals. And as a result, as we saw in the Barnett Shale, billions of cubic feet, trillions of cubic feet of natural gas available. And then that technology is now being used in the oil patch in the Eagleford Shale and to some degree out in Midland in the Permian Basin yep. to find oil and natural gas liquids. So some estimates are that there are 100 to 200 years worth of natural gas available yep. in Texas. We're only five years ago, we thought we were running out of natural gas. And the economic development engine of this is truly quite startling. Just in the Eagleford, just in South Texas, uh, the economists at the University of Texas San Antonio estimate that this is a $25 billion economic impact over the next 10 years. Yep. There are 30,000 people working in the oil and gas patch in South Texas, over 300,000 working in Texas directly, and probably 2 million indirectly affected. And of course, we know what's happening with oil and gas severance taxes, deposits into the rainy day fund. Right. It is truly an economic engine that is lifting all boats and it's really providing economic growth for our state and the country. Right. Well, in fact, as, as people look ahead to the next legislative session and there's, you know, brief glimpses of optimism uh, about the budget situation, the possibility of having some money to do this or do that a little bit proactively, uh, it's often said, you know, thank the eagle for jail <laughs> for, for what's going on. And of course, nothing comes, you know, without consequences. People will pick at anything. It doesn't make a difference how good it appears to be or good it is. But as you know, with all this economic development, which is undeniable, there have been some concerns raised about uh, the impact on roads. Uh, uh, Phil Wilson uh, uh, over at TxDOT, who is not exactly the uh, director of Earth First, uh, has nonetheless been complaining about uh, uh, the, the, some concerns about the, how, how roads have been impacted by this. We've heard about the consumption of water in some of the communities where the shale activity has been at the highest, that that may be exacerbating in those communities what is already a, a problem with water. We've heard about air pollution numbers going up after some years of the trajectory being down, starting to go back up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, possibly attributable to the Barnett. We've heard about methane, in particular down in the Eagleford Shale, which is especially problematic if you believe in climate change. Methane is supposed to be worse than just regular old air pollution as far as all that goes. You can come at any one of these if you want. Generally speaking, there have been some concerns raised associated with this shale activity, and I wonder if you would comment about any of that and where, and where you see it versus the, the, the obvious benefits to the state? Well, you, you raised a lot of issues, so yeah. let me try to address them. Yeah. The economic benefits are, are overwhelming. For example, in the Eagleford, if you can pass a drug test and get a driver's license, right. you can make $80,000 a year. Right. The unemployment rate in Midland now is 2.5%. It's yeah. the third lowest in America. In fact, there's no place for many of those oil and gas workers to live. Uh, it, it, companies it, are know. beginning to build housing right. for them. Right. Uh, and so we've seen for example, in the Eagleford, an area which had been predominantly used for farming, ranching, and for hunting. Yep. And, and I'm all in favor of hunting. That's a great thing. But now they have this revenue opportunity they never had before, and it's literally changing. So water is an issue, right? and I think it'll probably be discussed a lot this coming legislative session. Well, we know it is as a general issue, but specific as it relates to the sh are, you, are you concerned about the consumption of well, water in some of these places? Yeah. Fracking does use a lot of water, yeah. but in terms of percentage, it's relatively small. It's probably 1% of all the water use that is consumed in the state of Texas. Yeah. And the companies are working to use less water, and certainly to use less potable water. 
So they're using brackish water, they're experimenting with non-water substitutes, all the things that we would like to see happen to use less potable water. Mm -hmm. On the road situation, it's really a question of will the revenue streams associated with increasing the value of those property right. eventually catch up with what's happening with the roads. I'm encouraged that the county judges, county commissioners, and landowners are working with the companies down there to try to solve the problem in the short run. I know several of them... You acknowledge that there is a problem in the Several short of them are making great efforts. Several of the companies are making great effort, though, to address some of the road issues in order to try to relieve some of the challenges before the revenue streams from all this increased economic activity catch up, flow into the county coffers, and can then be used for road so, repair. So you think that, in fact, to the degree that there are issues, the revenue generated by this activity may, in fact, come in and solve those problems? I think it will. And in addition, the companies are working with the local leaders to, to try to solve the problems. Yeah. They want to have a good relationship because this is likely to be a long-term long -term relationship. Right. What about right. on the pollution stuff? Well, in, in terms, you mentioned specifically the Barnett Shell. Dallas I mentioned Fort the air pollution area. in Dallas-Fort Worth, and I mentioned the general concerns about methane. So with, with regard to methane, remember that when methane is released, that is a revenue stream that is leaving from the producers. So they have an incentive to capture the methane as well and yeah. then sell it and turn it into a profitable product. What we are trying to do is build enough pipe in order to capture every bit of production that's coming to the surface, send it to the refinery until where it's ultimately consumed. That takes time. Yep. So the production usually outpaces the pipe infrastructure development because you can drill a well yep. in a much shorter period of time than you can build the pipe. Now the pipe is beginning to catch up. We think that we'll be uh, able to alleviate some of these challenges on methane as we add additional pipe infrastructure. Mm -hmm.